Hey guys, someone recently requested that I make a video on how to adjust mixture screws on your carburetor. So here goes. Uh, try to, I've always been making kind of long videos, so I'm going to try to make these videos a little bit shorter and sweeter and more easier to digest. So let's get started. First thing you need to know is where to find the mixture screws. Uh, different carburetors have them in different places, but all two barrels and all four barrels will have two mixture screws. Um, a one barrel carburetor will usually have one mixture screw. It may go in at an angle, it may be on the side, but there will usually be one. And they're always very low on the carburetor. You can see on this quadrajet, there are two. We are looking at the front of the carburetor. Here's one here, and here's one over here. Now, if you look at the bottom side of the carburetor, this has still got the gasket on it, but I can show you. Uh, yeah, here's one. This one, this carburetor is pretty dirty. It's been in storage, but uh, that mixture screw, the other end of it, protrudes through. There's a passage behind that. You see this little tip right there? Well, right there my finger is, is you, that's just a, uh, well, how do you put it, it's, it's a, just a needle and seed, what they call it basically, uh, arrangement, and it tapers, and as you screw the mixture screw out, uh, counterclockwise, it emits more fuel into the idle air mixture circuits, where they go into the, this will be, you know, this is the bottom of the carburetor, and it goes, this manifold would be here, and that's where it gets drawn into the engine. So the more, obviously, the more you run these out, the more air fuel mixture is going to be emitted into the engine, and the richer it's going to run. Uh, go the other way, screw them in clockwise, and it will, the taper of the uh, mixture screw will start closing off how much air fuel gets into the engine. It starts leaning. So. You know that, so what you want to do is, this: you want to kind of envision that these, these things have a sweet spot when you're setting the idle mixture, because you start with the engine idling, warmed up, and you just take a common short flat blade screwdriver, put on these to adjust them, and this, like I said, this is with the engine running, and you start going in, start on one side pick a side doesn't matter which and just start screwing it in as you start screwing the screw in uh, it depending on how the adjustment was to start with it may speed up the engine idle speed may speed up and then it, the more you go just keep going you'll start to slow down again uh, if it was already in too far to begin with then it won't speed up it'll just start slowing down so any time, any direction that you're turning this thing, that it's, the engine does not speed up, it starts slowing down, you need to go back the other way with it. Because what you're trying to do, you're trying to find a sweet spot. The sweet spot on both these mixture screws is when the idle speed is the highest. So if you screw it in too far and it slows down, go the other way. Go back out the other way, it'll speed up and speed up. And then all of a sudden, it'll start to, the more you go, the other way it'll start slowing down again so you stop and you go back to where it was idling the highest you do one at a time you don't have to you don't have to do one a little bit and the other a little bit you don't have to try to balance them you're not you're not doing that what you're just trying to do is you're trying to get one circuit one side of it there's two circuits uh, get one idling the fastest then when you've done that go to the other one do it the same way Go in till it slows down, go back out till it runs the fastest, start slowing down again, go back to the fastest point. That's what you want. That's how you, you set mixture screws. Alternatively, you can use an engine vacuum gauge and hook it to a manifold vacuum port, which is like this here. This is a fairly large one. You will try to find a small one, but you want, this is probably one here also. You could use this one. But the engine at idle will be pulling about 15, 16, 17 inches of vacuum. So, you know, if you have some situation where you can't hear the engine exhaust very well, you got a fan running right there in front of you, or, you know, you just want to be more precise, you can go by the vacuum gauge because uh, 
it, it just basically is reflecting the same thing the idle speed's doing. When the idle speed raises up, the engine vacuum raises. So you just, in that case, your object is to get the engine vacuum reading the highest. Just keep that in mind. Your, your whole goal with this is to get the engine manifold vacuum and the idle uh, speed the highest. Now, what's going to happen is you may have to come over here to your idle after you're done with this. You may be idling so high at that point, it may have been so out of whack that you'll have to readjust your idle speed screw over here, your base idle speed. You may have to go down with it some. You shouldn't ever have to you shouldn't ever have to raise it because you know if it's already too low, then the only thing it's going to do is idle faster. So, well, you know, I, I said low, but that's because of the mixture. But that's the quick and dirty uh, how-to on this. There's really nothing to it. And like I said, different carburetors have them in different spots, but they're always going to be very, very down low on the carburetor on the on the base plate down here because they're the last junction before that air mixture usually gets sucked into the uh, engine so I can tell you that quarter jets always have them on the front uh, a dual jet which is just the front half of one of these quarter jets exactly the same they're on the front uh, those AFB Edelbrock Carter carburetors they always have two right here on the front also they're kind of angled up uh, a 2GC old Rochester two barrel there on the front also they're kind of angled more uh, same with the Dodge BBD uh, the Holley 2280s they're all like that now like I said some of the one barrels have just uh, they all just have one because there's only one idle circuit but it sometimes it's angled sometimes it may be in the center coming straight out you'll just have to find it uh, there's usually no other screws except for the base idle screw that you'll find on one of these carburetors of any type normally. There always are exceptions, but that's generally the rule. Now you will run into, on some of these later emissions carburetors, you may find that it's got a different kind of a screw. It doesn't have a slot. It may have just a, some kind of a strange head on it, like a hex head. And you may see that it looks like part of the housing's been carved out of it. Well, that's because it was sealed from the factory and they didn't want you to tamper with it, but somebody's already modified it so you could. And you can find a tool pretty easily to do that job. You can still adjust them the same way. So don't be traumatized by that. And very rare instances now, you may actually find that uh, there's still a plug in there over them that nobody's ever adjusted them. In that case, you've got to take the carburetor off. you got to saw on each side of this carefully and then take your little chisel and chisel out that aluminum plug and steel plug whatever's in there carefully but mostly by now I've hardly ever seen uh, any kind of quarter jet that's not been if it's a later model that's not already been hacked out like that so I will say one quarter jet I've got out there that I actually found that in a junkyard and it actually, they used, these things used to come with these kind of screws but they had plastic limiting caps that would only let it turn so far in one direction or the other and it actually still had them on and I have them somewhere and that's just about, you just about never find that anymore. So anyway, I hope that explains it pretty concisely. Uh, if you got any questions, please feel free to ask me either this or anything else. I'd be glad to advise you on it. And uh, don't ever look for mixture screws up here on the top of the carburetor. They're never going to be here. They're always going to be way down low at the front somewhere. So, like I said, uh, if you got any questions, please feel free to ask me. Have a good one.